Are you a cattle herder or a cat herder? I hear some little laughter there. So we think that cattle herding is funny or we think that cat herding is funny? Cats? You're a dog lover, right? <laughs> well, and look at the lie detector test down and we'll, we'll find out. But it is interesting that we somehow see something funny from our perceptions of cattle versus our perceptions of cats that causes us to think one is funny and one is not funny. Now you're going to ask the question, what in the world does cattle and cats have to do with me? And what we're going to talk about tonight. I'm here to share with you some of the newest thinking and research about leadership and hopefully inspire you to the idea that there is something to be learned about leadership that can help you to get more people to enthusiastically join with you in pursuing something that can help you influence people to make more good things happen. Let's do a show of hands. How many of you would like to do that? So please come along on this journey. And to start our journey, let's look a little bit more into this thing about cattle and cats and see how it all connects in. Now, why do we think that cattle is a normal thing to be herded? But when we hear that cats are herded, we laugh, and even Budweiser, I believe, had a, a commercial that was very funny, making fun of, of, of such an absolutely, totally, utterly ridiculous thing in the world. How could it possibly be? So think about words now. Let's put this into words, descriptive words. When we think of cattle and why we think that it's normal for cattle to be herded, what words would we use to describe cattle that makes us think that? Obedient. Obedient. Social group. Followers. Followers. Peaceful. What? Peaceful. Peaceful. Looking for grass. Looking for grass. Simple. Simple. Docile. Docile. It, we could come up with a lot of words, but you kind of get a flavor. They're, all the words we're coming up with have a flavor to them, don't they? Docile, gentle, peaceful. Go along with the social crowd. If they're doing it, I'm going to do it too. Whatever they're doing, I don't care. Just as long as I'll just follow them. I, I don't care that, that, that somebody, if they're zapping, oh, no, I don't know about that. I'm just going to follow what's right in front of me. Okay. Now, what about cats? What, what is it about cats? What words would we use to describe cats that we think it's really ridiculously funny to be hurting them? What? Independent. Independent. Indifferent. Indifferent. Okay, you've had some experiences with me. Hello, okay. We have psychological counselors out there. <laughs> uh, what other ideas? What? Pets. What? Pets. Okay. Pets. Standoffish. Standoffish. Cuddly. Cuddling. Cat lover, cat, a dog lover, okay. Uh, we're just picking up things, making lists so that the dog lovers can be taken care of later. No. Um, what, what are the words? We, individual. Individual, independent. Sharp claws. Sh sharp claws, uh, personal experience there, obviously. Uh, Mind of their own. Mind of their own. Okay, so we've come up with some words now to describe cattle. We've come up with some words now to describe cats. Now, think for a moment about this, okay? Let's take those words, and now let's apply them to people. So if we, when I say cat, if I'm referring to someone that's docile, gentle, peaceful, goes along with the crowd, social, when I say, that's cat. When I say cats, we're talking about independent and a mind of their own, stubborn, um, don't follow the crowd, uh, all of these different things, okay? Now, think about the real world. Imagine a place where you have worked or do work, employees, yourself, other people in the place of work, 
Would you say that those people at work would be more like how we've described cattle or more like how we've described cats? I would say there's a variety. Some are more like cattle and some are more like cats. Most of them are probably more like cattle, but it depends on the workplace, because I've seen more of them like cats in some workplaces. <laughs> I think it really depends on the workplace because I think a lot of that determines the kind of person who's attracted to that particular profession. Well, yes, and what you're really saying is that the culture of the organization almost predetermines sometimes who gets hired, and so there is already a bias built in sometimes. Uh, but if you get to an organization where no bias, no culture exists, and they're just hiring people, probably more cat-like than, than cattle-like. Now, let's, let's go further with this. Now I want you to think about your kids and grandkids. <laughs> Would you say that your kids and grandkids are more like the words that we used to describe cattle or more like the words that we used to describe cats? Cats. More like a more independent, mindful, more difficult to get them to do what we want and to get all of them to do the same thing and get on the same page, okay? So what we're kind of learning here is that people, while sometimes in a certain culture might be cattle-like, overall people are more independent, more mindful. They don't always do what we want. They don't always do it the way we want. Even if we're the boss, we can't always get them to do what we want. And if we're parents, well... Good luck. <laughs> okay. Now, I want you to think for a moment about the difference, about cats and dogs now. How many dog lovers do we have? Okay. How many cat lovers do we have? Uh, okay. If, as long as we do not talk about that publicly within Toastmasters, because then that would turn it into what looks like our Facebook news feed. So, we don't want to do that. Okay. A dog, if it hasn't been abused, trust you from day one. They're happy, anything you want to do, they're, they're there, they're your pal, they're your friend, right? A cat does not trust you. A cat is suspicious, a cat already knows what you're up to. I've seen that one before, a cat knows. You have to earn a cat's trust, okay? Whereas with a dog, you already have their trust. And so where we're going with this whole little discussion on cattle and cats and dogs is about the issue of trust that truly what makes the most difference in our ability to influence people to do what we want, to make good things happen, to join us in something that needs to be pursued, is there, is how well they trust us. Leadership is all about building trust in people. Whether it's our kids trusting us, it's Toastmasters trusting us in a Toastmaster club, it's our people at work trusting us. Leadership is not about visions. It's not about greater than life personalities. It's not about human relations techniques. And it's not about fancy titles. It's about building trust in people. Now, you may be asking some questions at this point based upon what I've just said. Okay? You may be asking yourself, well, how can that be true? And think for a moment about different situations you've been in, okay? And there are all kinds of situations and all kinds of trust that goes on, okay? The question isn't how important is trust, the question is how do you build trust? That's the real question, and myself and many others have been researching it for years and years and years. And what we found is that trust is about your character. And that real, true leadership, the leadership that influences people, is about who you are inside. It's not about your title, your techniques, your positions, your authority, or your power. It's about who you are. It's about character. Character is what causes people to trust you, and when they trust you, they will do almost anything for you. And so, here, I'm just giving you a brief introduction to something that obviously is a much bigger topic. But what I wanted to leave you with is this idea that if you really want to build trust, and really influence people in a greater way than you are, then what my challenge is to you is to consider building your own internal character. Now, some of the things that we've come up with are humility, 
authenticity, respect, integrity, and being of service to those you lead. So instead of you're leading the charge, you're in back and you're supporting them. Whatever it is, my recommendation, my suggestion, my challenge to you is to embrace the concept of building your leadership character to build your trust and become the very best leader you possibly can. Mr. Postman.